the same sun is a zone of uh, activation, of tension, where different ideas are put in confrontation with each other. And the basic idea for the title comes from um, thinking about uh, this common ground that could be shared uh, between all these countries, which are very different. We cannot talk about one only in Latin America. What we can do is to talk about a, a shared common ground and shared intersections that exist between the artists, the works, to a common uh, history that comes from 300 years of uh, colonial occupation by uh, either Spain or Portugal, but also a shared history of, of modernity, an idea of, of progress that was very present in the whole of the continent, but also followed by uh, periods of repressive governments, uh, military occupation, as well as uh, economic crisis. So in a way, recognizing how the artists deal with the present, but also use the past as a tool to understand what's happening today. My name is Amalia Pica. I am uh, from Argentina. When I was in high school, a teacher told me that Venn diagrams and set theory, which is this branch of mathematics that studies the relationships and operations between groups of mathematical objects, was banned during the period of dictatorship in Argentina. And this was a thought that always stayed with me as sort of a bizarre, maybe anecdote or fact. And one of the things that I have been interested in as an artist is can a thought occur outside a system that expresses that thought? So is it possible that maybe the dictators in the 1970s would have thought if we cannot express it in a mathematical language, maybe it will also not happen, these sort of relationships between people. So I just thought I want to make a work that allows for that branch of mathematics or for that mathematical expression to really be a metaphor or an excuse even for social interaction or for social coming together um, in a positive way. And I want to do that through the presence of the human body rather than the absence of the human body. So that's when sort of the presence of the bodies of the performers as the ones who make this sort of intersection happen is so important. So basically what the piece is, is it's called A, intersection B, intersection C, and it's expressed in mathematical language. And the performers have these set of rules which are very simple. They come and hold a sort of a shape up and then they have to intersect with the one that is next to them. And one of them can be outside of that intersection, which is like the one that doesn't belong. They hold that for 30 seconds and then they put the shape away, but they put it in a different position than it was found before. And they always choose a different shape and therefore the compositions always happen in a very different way. So in a sense, these sort of very formal abstract compositions are sort of owed to a way of coming together that will never happen again. So I'm Carlos Morales. I'm a Mexican artist. But the piece is basically this sculpture with hanging or floating symbols. There is no instructions about how it should be played or how it should be used. But what happens is that people start to use it in a very simple way, just by hitting them. But then you start to notice how some people are very stressed or some people are very calm or some people are very aggressive or some are really subtle. And sometimes you have people that can play for an hour and almost become like sand. And sometimes you have people that come and play it like if they were playing in a rock band and like really smash it. And this at the same time has consequences because it's something you start to hear through the exhibition. And also what I notice is that the guards or the museum itself starts to, you know, to put little rules, like put some limitations or to encourage people, you know, like not to use it too strong. And to me this is a process that becomes very interesting with the piece because then you start to really notice how, yeah, how we behave publicly, what we do when we're in a museum, what we do when we're in front of an art piece, but also with a musical instrument. It's really a piece that is about participation, how the audience behaves in front of an instrument. And then I guess it also has a certain uh, political aspect, because in the moment you start to put rules in relation to, to an art piece, uh, for good or for bad, like, like it or not, it becomes a political problem. Like, who puts the rules? Is the artist, is the museum, is the guard, is the public, is nobody, is everybody? Or 
how does it work? And I, I find very interesting how this question is open. Well, I'm Jonatas de Andrade, I'm from Brazil, and I'm presenting here the piece Cartazes para o Museu do Homem do Nordeste, posters for the Museum of the Men of the Northeast, which is this installation of 77 posters related to this museum that was created in 79 in Recife by the sociologist Gilberto Freire, who is responsible for one of the main theories about uh, how Brazilian culture was born being a mix between cultures, of the, between the colonizer, the African slaves, and the Indians, the native Indians. And today the museum is a classical anthropological museum with uh, thousands of artifacts, but also a bit uh, a part, I feel, a bit a part of today's life. I decided to put classified ads in the newspaper looking for workers that uh, wanted to pose for the posters of the museum. And I started having responses from everywhere and uh, a lot of men started calling me and uh, asking information, what was that about? And I would ask back, how do you imagine yourself in the poster of the museum? How do you imagine yourself as the man of the Northeast? And uh, we would have uh, very intense conversations of their backgrounds and how he imagines himself photographed in the poster. And the conversation was the most powerful part of that relation. When I ended up meeting the people, the, the photograph was not as strong as the talk we've had. But parallel to that, I started going with my camera in the, in the city and photographing situations of labor or men that I would meet. I would propose, I'm doing the posters up for the Museum of the Men of the Northeast. Would you pose for me? And then we would have a sort of negotiation, how that picture would be taken, what situation, usually connected to what was already going on, the work or in the street where the man was. It was so much about these sort of proud men of the Northeast, but also a very like a, uh, intimate relation that we engaged in that moment. So I think the piece emphasizes a lot the role of desire and the personal relations. The exhibition showcases artists from different generations, starting from artists working in the 60s, 70s and 80s, of which there was an absence in the collection, and which we put in dialogue with uh, artists working today. In a way, because many of these artists uh, have been influenced by the generations of before, and also recognizing the work that those generations did in opening uh, the doors for what's happening today. I think it's like a very important question, how to, how to work or, or to relate to, to a younger generation because I, I don't think it's about influencing them but more about stimulating them. So there's artists from my generation who I, I have been in exhibitions with so there's a really friendly familiar personal relationship there with several of the artists and then there are artists who are more like heroes because the exhibition runs across so many different generations. I feel extremely lucky. I'm in a sort of beautiful corner with um, Gabriel Sierra's piece and the Juan Downey sort of almost like a mandala that then you can see Gabriel's piece and then you can see my piece and then you walk through Gabriel's and then you see this beautiful Alexander Apostle film and I feel that the formal relationship between the works is um, wonderful. I've seen the exhibition, uh, I like a lot of works, and uh, Amalia Pica, Gabriel Serra, uh, the Tortillas de Damian Ortega, and also other interesting pieces that engage with mine maybe in creating this feeling of Latin America. The exhibition attempts to uh, deconstruct notions of Latin America where many different uh, conceptions of it can exist not only expanding uh, our notions of what Latin America could be, but also creating this much more wider open field of dialogue. So I think this is a really important thing that the works bring into the collection and into the museum. Not only that they're produced elsewhere, or that they come from Latin America, but they also come with a very specific optic and way of seeing the world. A kind of change of lens of seeing things, taking art as a learning tool to create a wider dialogue, not only within New York, but uh, elsewhere within the continent and beyond. Mm -hmm.